Welcome to Reinventing Perspectives, the show that's all about wealth creation through a What Would Jesus Do lens. If you're an entrepreneur and you love Jesus, then this is the place for you. We are going to be looking at eternal principles to inspire us to the next level where we create wealth and make an impact. Are you ready for the power of a kingdom perspective? Thank you for tuning in. Without wasting any more time, let's get to it. Last episode was about our secret sauce, which is the wisdom and the knowledge to serve. So check it out if you missed it. There's a great practical approach to applying that secret sauce. Today's episode is about being shrewd and is based out of Luke 16, which is the parable of the shrewd manager. The story basically talks about a rich man who had a manager who was wasting his resources. He approached the manager and he told the manager that he would soon be out of work. The manager, upon realizing that he didn't have any skills outside of this job and wondering how he was going to make a living, made a quick judgment. He went to all the people who owed his master money and discounted their debt. So basically, he cheated the master out of the money that he was supposed to get from the people who owed him in order to gain the friendship of the people who owed the master money. Then I asked, why does the Bible mention this person who cheated as being shrewd, as being a person of strategy? And a few points came out to me from this parable. Uh, Take the time to to read it and get what you can out of it. Uh, So the first point that I got from this is that strategy is never about tomorrow. It's long term. Because if we think short term, we miss the big picture. And we make poor quality decisions because we're thinking short term. The Bible says tomorrow has enough problems of its own. So don't focus too much on tomorrow. Because you can literally be crippled by the problems of tomorrow. And then you fail to act. That's why strategy has got to be 10 years out. 15 years out, 20 years out, it's got to be vision oriented. That doesn't mean that you'll know all the steps to getting to your vision. It doesn't mean that everything is going to be clear what's going to happen between now and the next 20 years. But sometimes, and specifically in this area, knowing what won't get you there is more important than knowing what will get you there because it gives you clarity and it helps you to avoid wasting resources of which your most important resource is time. You go down the wrong path and you waste years doing the wrong thing. Time is limited. In verse 8, we see that this man is commended by the master. And this is what it says. It says, For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Sounds like today, doesn't it? The sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Guys, we need to sharpen our powers of judgment. We need to learn to be strategic. This manager was self-aware. He said to himself in verse 3, What shall I do now? I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm too ashamed to beg. He knew that without work, he wasn't going to have money. But he also knew that money can run out. So he knew that his greatest asset was going to be people. Because instead of discounting the master's debt for these people, he could have taken the money for himself. I mean, he already cheated the master. He could have taken that money and, and kept it for himself. But he didn't do that. He knew that money was going to be limited. What he needed more than money was relationships. Think about it. There's so many athletes that get to the top of their game. They earn millions of dollars. One minute, you know, they're high flyers. A couple years down the road, they're broke and they never recover. And why don't they ever recover? Because of poor relationships with people. Think practically. You're broke and you're once an athlete. All you need is for when you make a call to ESPN, a friend of yours recommends you for a spot on a show and your problem has been solved. So people are more important than money. That's why this manager is commended for being shrewd. There's too much knowledge or education and exposure and too little pragmatism. And this creates a recipe for going backwards. There's a place for being practical, even in pursuing a dream. I'm going to repeat that. There's a place for being practical even in pursuing a dream. Execution requires pragmatism and execution is everything. Pragmatism means we look at things in terms of their success if we apply them practically. Run away from building castles in the air. Proverbs 28, 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Work your land. Be careful of building castles in the air. Opportunities come through people. He discounted their debts and he made friends. And he knew that as long as he had friends, he would never go hungry. Relationships is all about relationships. The Bible says, 
He who is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much, and he who is dishonest in very little will also be dishonest in much. And what this tells us is when we're looking at building teams as entrepreneurs and we're looking for people to work with and we're looking to build synergies with people, paying attention to how someone handles the small tasks will give us an idea of how they will handle bigger tasks. It's also important that even with us, we train ourselves to be faithful with little things. How you handle your company when you are two people or when you are six people is a good indication of how you will handle a company with 50, 100, 200 people. So don't despise small beginnings. Small beginnings are a reflection of what will happen when things expand. You cannot serve two masters. You will love one and you will hate the other. You cannot love God and love money. You will hate one and love the other. It's basically a warning, especially to those of us who were driven in entrepreneurial and, and business ventures, to be careful of how much we are after money. And to remember that the most important thing is we should serve God with whatever it is that we're doing. The money will come. We talked about it last episode. Wisdom. God gives us wisdom if we ask for it. And wisdom in the one hand, it has long life. And in the right hand, it has riches and honor. So the Lord has already known that we have need of these things. We don't have to love money. We should love God. The last thing I'll say is out of Matthew 6 verse 19 to 20, which says, So for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, nor thieves break in and steal. Because where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Let's be careful where we place our heart. Our heart should always be with God. And when we're doing things, we should always have a kingdom approach to doing things. And that doesn't have to be anything complicated. Sometimes it's as simple as aligning our business practices with godly values, doing things with integrity, treating people fairly, making sure our employees are fairly compensated. We're doing things with a kingdom approach because we know whom we serve and we know from where we receive our reward. Let's not forget guys when whatever it is that we're doing, to do it and make sure that we're being shrewd about it. Let's make sure that we're applying strategy to the decisions we're making. Let's make sure that we're thinking long-term and not short-term. And let's make sure that our power of making good decisions is growing. That's today's word. Be shrewd. If you got some nuggets out of today's episode, please do let us know. Help us to serve you better by joining the discussion on YouTube at Reinventing Perspectives or drop a comment on our website, reinventingperspectives.com. Until then, see you next episode. Stay well.